morning, everybody. It's Rob Muffet. Guys, today we're going to have a little review of some food items I purchased from uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, on their website from my food store way back in 2014. This material, this, this food, uh, most of it has a lifespan. It's stored in a cool, dry space for over 30 years. It's given me a lot of food security and uh, really good feelings whenever we had a hurricane come through and everybody else is running around like a chicken with their head cut off going to get food. I, I'm, a, you know, sitting in the catbird seat, got all the food I want. Um, it's, that's like food insurance. You know, you, you buy stuff and you set it aside, it's going to last 30 years. It's going to last longer than <laughs> I'm going to be around. So, uh, you know what? Uh, I thought I'd go over today and talk about what has been successful and what hasn't, what I liked and what I didn't like. Because if you do food storage, you, sh you shouldn't just store it. You should experiment with it and find out if you actually like to eat it. And that's what I've been doing. It's been a fun little hobby, trying to find different recipes for things I've got stored away. So... Let's go over the food I purchased from the Mormons. All these except one thing, the eggs, I'll show you. The first one is the non-fat dry milk. The Mormon site says it has a lifespan of 20 years. When I purchased it, I think they said 12 years, so it's gone up. So uh, I've, I've increased my, <laughs> my investment has, has increased in value over time. Oh, that's what a great feeling. But powdered milk actually I enjoy cooking with powdered milk because a lot of times when you're cooking you don't want to add a lot more liquid because you're actually boiling off some liquid to increase the flavor but you need to add some milk this way you can add the powder milk and add the milk flavor without adding any extra liquid it is it's it's a lot of fun to cook with the this particular brand family home storage it doesn't mix up as well as the brands you buy in the store and I've bought all of the ones in the store what I have to do is I get a quart container of yogurt and I save the container and then I add uh, a quart of water to the container and add two thirds of a cup of the dry milk and stir it up and put it in the refrigerator and let it sit overnight. The next day it's all dissolved, it's fine. Now that is a disadvantage. The advantage is the milk tastes good and it still tastes good after four years in storage. Whereas the milk you buy in the grocery store, even the best ones I could find, like the ones at Winn-Dixie, over time they would get yellow and have an off flavor and, and, and taste. And that's not been the case with this milk. I've been very happy with the flavor, even though it's over four years old now. So it, it, it's a little bit more expensive than the, the one you get in the store too. But it's worth it over time. It's one of the few things that I've purchased and had to repurchase because I used it too much. And I end up using up all my stores. These are the ingredients and the uh, calories and, and so on. Now this is one of several that I have not opened up because I'm assuming it's going to be like rice. I, I, I use parboiled rice when I do use rice. I've gotten away from this type of rice. But it's good to have rice on hand because you can use rice for a lot of different things. I've been wanting to experiment where I've seen people on YouTube, they take rice and make like an emulsion and have it put it over a screen and heat it and make like a little, uh, like a wrapper. It's like a little tortilla made out of rice and they can fill it up with vegetables and meat and so on. And it's something I'd like to try. And you can also make rice wine, all different things besides just plain white rice. And sugar is another one I haven't opened. It's, it, it'll last more than 30 years. It'll probably last 300 if you wanted to. Um, apple slices. You don't seem to get a lot in a can, and the can is super light because these are apples and they're dried, and you, you feel like maybe you got cheated. Um, you, there's, for the price, you would think there should be more, but then you, when you think about how many apples that have been dried up to make this amount that you have in the can, and when you look at how much apples cost, it's not that bad. Also, if you have a storage situation where you're saving for emergencies, you're going to get tired of eating beans and rice and macaronis. It would be wonderful to have some fruit. And this will hit this. Split. It, I've used them quite a lot. I like them. Um, in fact, I need to stop eating them and keep them in the can for future use and just use the fresh apples. Uh, the macaronis. I, I've been experimenting with the macaronis 
and my little tiny pressure cooker making quick quick meals with very amount small amounts of heat and energy so uh, like if you did have a situation like an emergency you probably wouldn't be making really big meals you'd be making small meals and and you can do this with the macaroni and the pressure cooker um, with very small amounts of heat and energy used this has been a disappointment the spaghetti bites that that tastes fine it is wonderful in fact but the, the length is like two or three inches i'm 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 addicted to regular spaghetti you twirl around the four <laughs> If you're hungry, you're going to eat it, and you're going to be thankful for it. But I like long pieces of spaghetti, and, and this little tiny, tiny little short pieces of spaghetti. It was I wouldn't buy these again. I would just stick with the little macaronis. Um, now, this is something I didn't purchase from the Mormons. It was egg crystals. It doesn't last, but I think five or six years. In fact, I looked at one of the pouches. It's good till 2020, October, so another year or so. I think I purchased these back in 2014, so they've been going for like six or seven years. Um, these still taste like dehydrated eggs. They don't taste like real eggs, but they're pretty close. These were rated very high on Amazon. If, there's, if they still sell these, I'll leave a link. I, I would recommend these for, for dehydrated eggs, but they're not the same as eggs, but they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty good, actually. Um, and they give you a lot of protein and they're helpful in cooking other things the pinto beans i grew up with beans and what's happening is i recently discovered in the last few years uh split peas and lentils and i don't know why i spent so much time cooking and making beans because the peas and the lentils cook so much quicker and i can do so much more with them and i just prefer them now over the beans i've used these a couple times uh they're, they're, you have to soak them for a long time. You have to cook them for a long time. They're good. But uh, I wish the Mormons would sell the, the lentils and the split peas instead of the beans. Or with the beans, I should say. The Hyder onions was a surprise. I use it almost like a spice. Whenever I'm cooking, there's very few things I cook. I don't end up throwing a little bit of the dehydrated onions. I, I kind of like them. In fact, this is one of the items I've had to repurchase because I've used so much of them. The uh, refried beans was also a surprise. I never used refried beans from a can where you reconstitute with water. They taste pretty good. They're not excellent. You wouldn't run home and have them. But the thing about the refried beans is they take very little energy and time to cook up as opposed to cooking regular beans. I would purchase these instead of the regular beans in the future because I would probably just be making some sort of bean dish with them. If I got regular beans, well, this is already refried beans. It's something I could put on a tortilla or, or a filling or, or something. You know, it's 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 better than the other beans. Uh, here we go, beans again. Same story. This is the beans I grew up with. Hard white wheat. This was new to me. I uh, grew some uh, wheatgrass, and I also put the wheat in the pressure cooker and made like a breakfast cereal with it. Uh, and I put this hard white wheat into my Vitamix blender, my old 30-year-old 3600 Vitamix blender, and made whole wheat flour with it, and made bre uh, fresh bread, and had a wonderful taste. It's uh, I, I would I would purchase more of the white wheat. It's uh, also there's a book I'm going to recommend at the end of this video. It's by I think her. Uh, Esther Dickey, I think her name was, she wrote a book on how to use wheat, powdered milk, honey, and salt and survive for a short time just on those four ingredients. So there's a lot of things you can do with wheat you may not be aware of, even though nowadays everyone's scared of the gluten. And uh, I saw a comedian said he was going to dress, dress one of his children up for Halloween as gluten. <laughs> this scared people in the neighborhood. Uh, Black beans, I grew up in Miami. Sometimes you gotta have some black beans with your rice and chicken, come on. <laughs> hey, Mita, hey, hey. Uh, this was the biggest disappointment, was it the high, it's, it's probably because I don't know how to cook it. There's very few foods that are bad or taste bad, you just don't know how to cook them. And that's the case here probably. I don't know how to cook it correctly. It's just, they're, they don't have a very strong taste and they're kind of mild, kind of bland, and they, the, the texture 
people in your mouth just doesn't feel that they're 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 kind of blah. I, I was kind of disappointed. I would not buy them again. White flower is one of the the other ones I haven't opened up yet. I'm pretty much sure it's going to be fine and just like regular white flower. I'm, I don't think I can be disappointed. Uh, potato flakes was sort of a surprise because I realized you use it with powdered milk so it's going to be rather a high protein food when you're finished and it takes probably the least amount of cooking time of anything here uh, unless they're all apples because you could eat them raw but everything else nothing cooks as quick as potato flakes super quick this is the box the non-fat dry milk comes in it's very extremely thick corrugated cardboard and you can store this in your closet or in the corner of your bedroom or something and they have these very thick mylar packages that the powder milk comes in um, what I do to make the milk is I put one third of the powder milk and a quart of I think I talked about that in a container and let it sit overnight it works out fine and I fold the pouch over where I have the hole in the opening for the powder to come out and then I store it in the refrigerator after it's opened and then just use it whenever I need milk that way there's no waste this is the last item I think it's one of my favorites is oats and you can use it for so many things however I've been recently reading about the situation where they've found that the farmers are using Roundup when they uh, harvest the oats and I feel sorry for the farmers. They were told the, the Roundup was fine to use and now we're finding out it wasn't. So I don't know how much glyphosate is in the brand of oats that the LDS sells. The, before I re, would reorder any oats, I would contact them and find out if they have any uh, information on the glyphosate concentration in the oats that they purchase and sell. They may have very little. Um, they could be purchasing organic oats or something where there would be any glyphosate, which would be a big selling point for them, I think. Now, here's the book I mentioned. It's an old book, and there has been other books that come out that uh, after this book that may have better, more information. But this is sort of the book that got me started on uh, prepping for food and like I said, she, she talks about, Esther Dickey, she talks about using just powdered milk, sugar, or, or honey, uh, salt, and powdered milk, and wheat, wheat, wheat berries, wheat grain. And she, she uh, sprouts the wheat, makes wheat grass, and cooks different things with the wheat and the powdered milk, and is able to have actually nutritional and a variety of different meals, you'd be surprised. Uh, the things she was able to make with just those four ingredients. So it's a very good starting point. The Mormons have wonderful food uh, cookbooks and information online and on YouTube on how to prepare food and store it and so on. They're kind of the masters at it. I, I really like what they're doing. But that's the book that got me started. Now this is the site the LDS Mormon site where you can go on and purchase. You do not have to be a member of their church. Also, they only charge $3 per order for shipping. Whether you order one box or a dozen boxes or three dozen, they charge $3. And these are the current prices. I'm sure they'll change over time. Um, but it is a wonderful feeling to look over in the corner and see stacks of boxes of food that you know will last for 30 years also that you know how to cook them and use them in nutritious uh, pleasant and, and uh, enjoyable meals that that don't take you a lot of time or energy and you have a sense of security to having this food it's like it's like food insurance you have car insurance health insurance health insurance this is food insurance you buy it, you store it, it's good for 30 years, you know, you can't go too wrong. And you can do it over time. You don't have to uh, buy 20 boxes at one time. If you could save up the money at the end of the month, you got 20 to 50, buy a box of macaronis that are going to be good for 30 years. Uh, 
I tell this to people. None of my friends have done this. None of my family have done this. But I, I feel with a sense of conviction that this was the right thing to do. And it's been a fun project, learning how to use the different things, these bulk foods. We normally buy things already prepared for us are much more easier to cook. It's been fun. So I hope this is something that helps you guys, something that will give you uh, encouragement to try out these foods. This is the review of the ones I liked, the ones I didn't like, the ones I'll reorder again, the ones I have some questions about. So I have a playlist of a bunch of other food uh, cooking recipe videos. I've also got a playlist of prepper videos and uh, frugal living and so on. So I hope you check my other videos out, my playlist and my channel. I put on new stuff every week. Been doing it for over 12 years. Got close to 800 videos. And got a bunch of cool people I feature on my channel too. You want to check them out in their relation to me. Just I think they're cool. You want to give them some uh, some love. Check out their stuff they're doing. They need some more people to watch. All right, guys. Go and get yourself some food. Set it aside and, and feel comfortable when the next... <laughs> hurricane comes through or tornado or earthquake or uh, if you're nervous about the election or whatever this will make you sleep better at night. I know it does me. Alright guys take care. See you out there.